you knew the Jack Abramoff, who was at the center of the most massive case of political impropriety since Watergate. You knew the Abramoff, whose remarkably versatile crookedness led all the way to the Bush White House and led to 20 convictions. But you probably didn't know the other Jack Abramoff, the true Abramoff, the Abramoff you loved, the Abramoff with a song in his heart. All right, well, he did impressions. How about that? In our number one story, they made a movie about him, Casino Jack, and in the title role, Kevin Spacey has already earned a Golden Globe nomination, and he joins me in a moment. First, the quick history lesson. Abramoff, diverting tens of millions of dollars in lobbying fees to wine and dine lawmakers, lavish them with travel and campaign contributions, courting them on behalf of Native American tribe casinos, his most lucrative clients. He pleaded guilty and was sentenced in 2006, served three and a half years in a federal prison for fraud, corruption, and conspiracy, but he always walked really nicely. The Abramoff dealings led to the convictions of lawmakers and bureaucrats and businessmen, 20 of them all told, including Bush White House budget official David Safavian and former Republican Congressman Bob Ney, Bob Ney who is now studying meditation with Buddhists in India. As for Mr. Abramoff, he recently finished a stint working at a kosher pizzeria in Baltimore while living in a halfway house. Owner Ron Rosenbluth told the Associated Press, I was able to get some of his expertise in marketing. It was nice. It was interesting. It was nice. He was very helpful. Plus, there were the 49 million large cheese to go for those casinos. <laughs> that ability to charm and his drive to succeed permeates through Kevin Spacey's portrayal in Casino Jack. Some people say Jack Abramoff moves too fast. Jack Abramoff cuts corners. Well, I say to them, if that's the difference between me and my family having a good life and walking and using the subway every day, then so be it. I will not allow my family to be slaves. I will not allow the world I touch to be vanilla. Joining me now, as promised, the star of Casino Jack, which opens tomorrow in New York and Los Angeles. I, I liked your opening, but you also you failed to mention the Tom DeLay was also part of that whole scandal, ended up on Dancing with the Stars. That's true. <laughs> and, and has recently been found guilty in yes. Texas. But he had the best mugshot of all time, that big, smiling, beaming ad campaign. <laughs> it's good to see you again. Thank you for coming in. Thanks for having me. You went to prison to see Abramoff and yeah. sort of uh, research it firsthand? Yeah, but, uh, George Hickenlooper, our, our sadly uh, uh, yeah. departed director, who passed away last month unexpectedly. George had gone and met... Uh, with Abramoff four times and then told me he thought I might get a chance to meet him. So I decided I didn't want to look at any of the research. I just wanted to go meet the man. And so we went to Maryland Cumberland uh, Federal Prison mm. and spent a whole lot of time uh, with the man himself. And it was a really unique opportunity, first of all, to meet him in that circumstance. Sure. It was probably not the best place that he wanted to meet people. But other than the fact that I think he was bitterly disappointed that it wasn't George Clooney playing him, <laughs> uh, we had a really uh, frank, very open conversation. I was more interested in sort of the emotional terrain of what he was going through in those two years rather than the case itself, because I knew I could vet other people and I could find out what was factual and what was not. But he, he was, I, I could see, even in you know, those circumstances, that when he was at the top of his game, mm -hmm. why he was as successful as he was. He's very passionate, very charming, uh, believed in Republican principles. Uh, was a faithful man, uh, dedicated to his family and his religion, charming, funny, right. impressionist, as you mentioned. Um, yeah, and I do impressions that well, the movie, as, as he did. Everyone who knew him talked about I'm how he was. I know, because no one ever reported about that. But he used to sit, apparently, at Signature's Restaurant, which is his restaurant in D.C., and hold court and be doing Ronald Reagan and be doing Dolph Lundgren, because he produced a couple of Dolph Lundgren right, films. Right, he would have been a producer. Uh, and so in the movie, I do all of those people that he did. But I, I do have to admit, I, I've expanded his repertoire. He never did a Bill Clinton um, oh, so that's your, that's that's your mine. little but, but poetic again, license. I, but here. then again, I, I've never done a Dolph Lundgren, so okay. he's, he's expanded mine. But that, that, I don't want to focus on it because there's so much to talk about, but there's, that, is, that, that is the most, one of the most delightful unknown facts that I've had in my experience, particularly in this subject, since I found out that the late Walter Matthau, who he told me that he did a series of impressions of sports broadcasters. Vin Scully, Howard Cosell, all the ten or twelve of them, and then proceeted to do them for me at a dinner. And do them well? No, they were <coughs> oh, he all. Didn't do them well. oh. No, they were all just versions of a Walter same, Matthau impression. Same I just sat there and went. And he's on, on the starting line. Yeah. No, it was always as a. This is Vin Scully at Dodger Stadium. What do you think? <laughs> so, my, were any you? Did you hear any of the Abramoff? Did he do the impressions for you? Were uh, they any good? Uh, he was very good, and really? lots of people talked about it. And in fact, in the film, I, I, I do a number of ones that he did. Uh, including uh, uh, Sylvester Stallone and Rocky, which he apparently loved to do. So in a weird way, I mean, look, we've made a movie that we hope is entertaining and right. funny because, look, some of these circumstances are so outrageous, it is inherently funny anyway. Mm -hmm. But we also are trying to make some political points about the hypocrisy of, I mean, look, 
this is a guy who he made some really bad judgments and he's paid for that but at the end of the day he was also part of a culture and part of an environment that quite frankly is still going on so the idea that we threw this bad guy in prison and look how we've cleaned up the industry I think we just had an election that kind of proved that's not exactly the truth. Well certainly the staffing of the of the elected people right off K Street suggests that there's just a, there's several other Jack Abramoff maybe not as good at it waiting to be to be found about you and playing factual characters, whether it was Clarence Darrow or Bobby Darren or Ron Klain in Recount, uh, the, the characterization is very layered. You wind up like seeing things in Clarence Darrow that you really don't like. It's not one way or the other. Is the reverse likely to happen with Jack Abramoff? We're going to find ourselves liking him to yeah, some I, degree? I, I, here's what's been interesting. We, we went down to D.C. and we showed the movie there. Yeah. And, and if there was one screening I wish George Hickenlooper had been at, it would have been the D.C. screening. Um, and what was interesting was that we found the audience there was laughing at stuff about 15 seconds before anybody else in any other <laughs> screening because they saw it coming. But I think that there's something quite fascinating about looking at somebody who has been so vilified in yep. the press and sort of made into a kind of villainous caricature. Well, how do you take a person like that and make them into a fully rounded human being? And and that's what I love about the acting profession. It's a very humanizing experience because when you have to put yourself in someone else's shoes, and imagine what it was like if they're not just an evil person who was setting out to do evil, mm -hmm. which is, you know, probably rare. interesting to play for about 10 seconds. And, but rare in real life, <laughs> yeah, really. Rare in real life. So you're trying to look at circumstances. You're trying to look at what, what the decision making was. What did he think he was doing? Because on a lot of other levels, in addition to things he did that he got in trouble for, I couldn't find any evidence that he had a fabulous Swiss chalet, that he had his own private jet, that he was living high on the hog. Mm -hmm. So you look at all that money and you say, well, what was he doing with it? And in his mind, I think he was trying to do good things and therefore it justified some of the other stuff that he did do. All right, so it's uh, we've had Mr. Klain already now. Uh, Mr. Abramoff, is there another political <laughs> figure? Is there anything else you want to take a, a, a shot at? Pat Moynihan. Really? Yeah, what a great figure. Oh, my goodness. What a great figure. Probably a really great story, too. Yeah, how And there's actually just been a book that came out about yeah. Moynihan. But you know, like someone like that, you know, watching from a distance as I do now from England. I mean, I remember even just recently, and I'm sure you've had shows about it, that there was someone running for Congress, I believe, who ran on the Constitution, and mm -hmm. she was a constitutionalist. And then it turned out she hadn't actually read the document. And it makes you kind of long for the day when people who go into politics or public service have integrity, they believe in what they're doing, and they know what they're doing, and they know why they're doing it. And I think that what this film tries to highlight is. What happens when money and power and influence invade our political system? And expertise at those things too. Yes. It, it, it doesn't necessarily. It's, expertise is a wonderful thing to have. If you're if you're Moynihan, it may not be such a great thing to have. Uh, if you're Jack Abramoff, <laughs> uh, Kevin Spacey's film is called Casino Jack. Obviously, that's Jack Abramoff. Congratulations on the Golden Globe nomination. Thank you very much. Uh, looking forward to this, and and thanks again for coming in. It's you always bet. a pleasure, thanks. sir.